Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm happy to uh, talk a little bit on the topic of magnetic flux ropes at the magneto pass, and then talk about the their in associated um, ion precipitation into the cusp region of magnetosphere. Okay. So I'll first give an introduction, talk about what is magnetic reconnection. What, uh, I'm gonna use a computation model. So I just walk through the model briefly, and then I will address the uh, computation of this magnetic flux ropes and then the, the ion precipitation. And then I would, if I have time, I I'll talk a little bit about the uh, flux rope in a different region around the earth. Okay, so first this introduction. Um, so magnetic flux ropes, it, they are fundamental magnetic field structure in the solar and space plasmas. I'll give two examples. Uh, in a magnetosphere, uh, they can be generated um, during magnetic reconnection at the magneto pass, the magneto tail. As a result, they are essential part of electromagnetic energy and plasma transport between the solar wind and magnetosphere. So these flux ropes, their interaction and their even entanglement uh, was um, discussed, for example, in this recent paper by Russell and Chi. Um, in the solar atmosphere, these are also fundamental structures in pre-eruption magnetic field and eruptions associated with solar flares. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Uh, you see that animation, that's the NASA movie of uh, what happens in um, through magnetic reconnection. So the blue lines are the geomagnetic field lines and this medium, there are solar wind coming from the sun and they impact the Earth's magnetosphere. So they're constructed by this geomagnetic field and press into a long tail on the day side, you can see this light stuff. Just, there are some energetic particles dumped into the earth. But if you follow the line, these blue lines, you can see the magnetic field lines, they're kind of open. So when this impact hit the earth and it's open up, and then you can see this region as the cusp region of geomagnetic field, that's particles from the sun can um, be precipitated in. And on top, it shows a, a schematic sketch of what's going on here. So these are the geomagnetic field lines, and then these are the magnetic field from the sun into planetary space. So when they're pointing southward, they're opposite to northward point, pointing geomagnetic field. It can cause some instability at the boundary between the solar wind and magnetosphere. So this is called magneto pause. When that happens, you can see all these field lines, they're kind of connecting from the sun to the earth directly. In the meantime, they're propagating and convecting tailward because of the magnetic force and then lead to a trail of open field lines. So these are the red regions. So these are the open field lines. All those field lines, they're originally closed from pole to pole, geomagnetic field lines. They're, I'm gonna call those closed field lines. So you have two different geometries here, okay. And then reconnection, so this happened connecting between the field line, southward to northward at magneto pass, that is called the magnetic reconnection. So that process can also happen to the magneto tail. So when there's a whole globally, this process happens that can drive the large geomagnetic storms. You can see this is the aurora. Okay. And this magnetic reconnection on the day side, it was across the day side aurora. Okay. All right. So if I have a spacecraft going across the magnetic path, they can kind of uh, reconstruct what happened in the detailed structures along the magnetic path. So this is by Hu and Samirab using reconstruction of field line structure um, based on the satellite crossing, based on the magneto hydronic dynamic equilibrium. So they kind of trace the field line. You can see it's not that simple, open from one side to the other side, but they're kind of a loop around. So the detailed structures. These structures pointing to the structure, I'm gonna talk about the flux ropes in 3D geometry. Okay? On the bottom next example of line tide coronal flux tubes 
flux tubes. So they're also flux robes. Uh, solo dynamic observatory image is shown here. There's a, a emission radiations. I can see the trace of field lines, energetic particles. And then this is also a different risk construction approach this for these twisted field lines associated with the flare. And this is the result. So they can have TW is a choice number. You can, they can figure out their different choice numbers. So basically it flux ropes twisting. They are kind of a important structures in space plasmas and solar. So my talk today will focus on the physics of magneto pulse, okay, the Earth's magneto pulse. The, the reconnection happens in the collisionless fashion. That means the mean free path between charged particles is so long, there, there's no collision between them. So dissipation of magnetic field is not through collision. It's gonna be through anomalous resistivity. This is between interaction between particles and the electromagnetic field. Okay, so the particle kinetic physics, kinetic physics is very important for triggering of that instability of magnetic reconnection. So the reconnection is explosive. The explosive instability occurs, they occur in thin current sheets. And you can see from my previous um, animation, they kind of drive dynamics in the global structure and the magnetic field configuration. For example, from open, from close to open up to the solar wind. When it's the magneto pulse is open up, the particle can come along from the solar wing directly into the magnetosphere, cause a lot of a, a significant transport there and heating. But in a self-consistent system between the solar wing and magnetosphere, so these local instabilities, this reconnection in this thin region, the magneto pulse, they're not isolated from the global geometry and the solar wing driving condition. Okay, so this reconnection can be uh, um, triggered by driven, driven by solar wind compressing the magnetosphere constantly or time dependently. Okay, so the range of this physics goes from particle scale to meso and global scale. Um, I, I wrote a note here, the boundary layer, that thin current sheet layer is the thickness is about I lama radiate, which is the ion gyro motion around the magnetic field. And this whole process is the three-dimensional, is self-consistent, meaning you have magnetic field structure, you have normal modes, the, the waves, and particle transport, acceleration, and thermal transport, they are all inside the same interaction between the solar wind and magnetic field. So this is a dynamic process. You change magnetic field geometry, and you change the particle dynamics and then vice versa. Okay. Um, so to study this process, we're gonna use global hybrid particle simulation, which is the first principle approach to address the ion kinetic physics in this self-consistent global electromagnetic field. Uh, to go to a little bit of a technicality here. So the model uses, um, the, the, so this, this is a scheme, basic equation of a model. So ions, they are the individual particles. We call this particle in cell in a numerical approach. Uh, so this is the momentum equa equation of motion of charged part of a proton. So we use the proton. Uh, the charged particles here are protons and electrons. So these are the proton. So this is the Lorentz force. And then the electrons, uh, we assume is the massless fluid. So, because we focus on ion scale for electron, they're much higher frequency um, dynamics. So, in, and an electron is much lighter. And so this momentum equation, in the momentum equation, where I can drop this ME term, electron mass term. So that will give me approach to connect the electric field, magnetic field, because in this frequency regime, this equation, momentum equation of electron fluid must be satisfied. And there is a collision term. So this is gonna be modeled as anomalous resistivity here between the protons and electrons. Um, and then we get the current from Ampere's law. So the VI, VE are the electron and ion flow velocity. So you bend the current, you can 
calculate electron ion bulk flow velocity. And then by the difference, you can calculate electron bulk flow velocity. And Faraday's law close up the, the, equa the set of equation and then advances magnetic field. So this is the first principles approach with ion being particle in cell particles. We are currently apply this scheme to the whole, this is the global domain for the magnetosphere. The sun is on the right. So this is the earth and you have the day side magneto pass and then that's the magneto tail. Okay. Uh, a little bit more details. So we give, so this is the regime of the physics. Omega I is I uh, cyclotron frequency. That's the, the frequency range uh, we were gonna address. Uh, then, then we have the particles in outer magnetosphere. We have cold ion fluid in the inner magnetosphere, this plasma sphere. They coexist with the particle ions. So initially, we just launch solar wind, make it interact with the dipole magnetic field. And we have ionosphere boundary condition. Okay, so there is the conductance. And this current dependent resistivity, so what um, that goes into trigger reconnection is the ad hoc uh, current dependent resistivity that's kind of a mimic the wave particle interaction, like for example, lower hybrid instability is for triggering a magnetic reconnection. Now the IMF, which is interplanetary magnetic field, it can change direction. So it can turn southward or northward. Uh, you can launch, turn them gradually. So that is there forever. Or you can turn it with a sharp discontinuity coming from the solar wing, which we call tangential discontinuity. Okay, so that's the whole, for the whole uh, magnetosphere. For, since we're focusing on the day side, so we have another code, which is the earlier version of NG3D, uh, that is only focusing on the day side. So we use a spherical coordinate system. Uh, the advantage of using it, the uh, spherical coordinate system, is you notice the boundary of the magnetosphere is kind of a curve. Basically, the spherical coordinate system has a coordinate line along, more or less along the boundary direction. So your normal direction of crossing boundary can be, you can impose more higher grade resolution there. Okay, okay so now in this geometry, okay, so the sun is um, outward on my side, and then the earth is right there. Okay, so you have, this is the, that's the, the this is a magnetic field contour. So you have a magneto, the, the bow shock, and here is the magneto pass, that's the boundary. Uh, where the reconnection is going to occur. So I'm going to talk about this, but at this point, this is just a, some structure I want to talk about in this day cycle simulation. Okay, uh, so you have a simulation code, so you have a bunch of ways to, you have to do benchmark, you have to do validation, it's, it, especially for the global simulation. Uh, one powerful approach, and uh, this is, Interesting is comparison with the space observations. Okay, so this I'm going to address. I'm going to compare the simulation or just simulate the observed events under the observed conditions. Okay, so that's my way of comparison, also validation of the code. Okay. All right, so with that introduction, now I'm going to start talk about the simulation, use that computation code to study the magneto paths and look at this concept of magnetic flux ropes. The case I'm gonna simulate is from an observation event. Uh, it's an MMS, um, magnetospheric multi-scale mission of NASA is crossing the magneto paths on this date in 2020, uh, 2015. Uh, this is the NSF, um, it's a GEM Dayside Kinetic Challenge event. So in, in the, the GEM challenge, um, so different modeling, model of people get together, look at the same event and compare among the codes and, and with observations. Okay, so in this case, we have a southward in the planetary magnetic field, we have a dipole tilt, and there is a solar wind parameters. MA is a Mach number, tells you how fast the solar wind 
moves relative to the L fan speed, which is the uh, normal mode speed there. Okay, so because in this case, we have a tailward dipole tilt, so we first did a, a baseline simulation to look at the general structure uh, as a function of dipole tilt. So we have, so this is the Earth, okay, so this is the geomagnetic field. So you have the solar wind magnetic field outside. Okay, so this is where they're interacting. Reconnection is happening here. You can see the connection goes this way and then open to, so the, the, blue, the purple field lines open to the solar wind. Okay, so when this reconnection happens. So that's when dipole tilt is zero. Now you have a little bit dipole tilt, a fit, make, make it um, 15 degrees, so tilt this way. So this red arrow is a dipole tilt, dipole momentum. So that put the X line, X line is the reconnection side. It's a little bit above the equator. And then you further tilt to 27 degrees. And this is the case of this observation case. Okay, so that puts the, the reconnection line even on the north side of the equator. Okay, so the, the Z north points up, south is down. And if you have an opposite dipole tilt, tilt uh, sunward, sun is there, sunward, and you put the X line below the equator. So this one is what we're gonna focus on. So at this point, I would say we find the reconnection is a, close to two R Earth radius. Earth radii above the equator. And this is uh, the paper I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so that, this is that figure. Uh, you can see what are these? These are the magnetic field lines after reconnection. So after that reconnection add, I said at, the, at close to two RE right there, okay, it's so above the equator. And so it's right there. So, but this is more complicated. You can see this is not just a single reconnection here, but it's kind of a rope run magnetic field lines. So these are called magnetic flux ropes. So how is the flux ropes happening in the detailed structure? This is from something called multiple X line reconnection. Okay. So here is the, the mechanism. Okay, so the mechanism was proposed by Li and Fu in 1985. At the time, uh, they're trying to explain these flux robes that which was observed at magneto pass called flux transfer events. Um, and so that events pointing that the magnetic field must be some curved around like, a, like loops. Okay. And so this is the view. Uh, if you view from so the down dust direction, so Z points to the north, X point to the sun, and the Y is down dust or east-west. If you look from east-west direction, what you see, the projection, there are loops. But if you extend, you view from side views, this is what happens. It's a loop around and then connect, okay? Okay, so Li and Fu propose this is because you have multiple X lines. So if I turn my coordinate, turn my plane to including Y. So this X, the, the horizontal axis is along Y. That is called the X line. This is where you connect a lot of reconnection point together, okay, perpendicular to this plane. This plane is the reconnection plane when the field is anti-parallel. So if you turn to that plane, you can see if you have, I have here, I have three X lines. And then I allow this magnetic field to, in general, not only have a north-south component, has also had the east-west components. So, so make it more general. And then you can have reconnection at three lines. And then after they reconnect, okay, and even in your 2D picture, they will just sell um, a close on themselves is possible. But in 3D picture, so the magnet will have to go somewhere okay, along, not only in the um, turning direction, but in the Y direction, they have to connect all the field lines to have to connect together. So this is the way of connection. So and as a result, you have this two loops separated 
from the three X line. So that's the multiple X line reconnection model to explain why you have flux ropes. Okay. Uh, this is so the mechanism proposed in 1985. Um, Professor Luli was my graduate advisor. Um, I went to study, begin my graduate study in 1988. Uh, so in the group of Professor Luli, what I heard was Professor Luli thought about uh, think, trying to think about why you have this flux transfer event at Manitou Pass. And then this was a summer in Alaska. He likes fishing. And then when he was fishing, he was thinking about the picture and eventually he figured out this is what happened. And I think that's genuinely uh, what pe people believe what happened. Okay, so to come back to the simulation. So if I zoom in, so this is gonna be Z, this is X, X, Z line. Zoom in this region of reconnection at the magneto pause. I said it's around two RE, so it's right there, 1.8 RE. Okay, so around this region, there's a thin current sheet. It's about the size of an ion lama radius. This is called the ion diffusion region. Okay, uh, in this region, because it's a thin current sheet, so, and this, the thickness is about the proton gyro radius. It's much larger than electron gyro radius. So electron and ion within this range is going to be, going to be separated. One is magnetized, the other is ions can be unmagnetized because this boundary layer is too thin. Okay? So it's generated a whole effects because of a charge separation. So what you see, so this is a magnetic field. The middle is By, that's the down dust direction. Okay, this is a density, so temperature, uh, parallel temperature, perpendicular temperature, relative to the local magnetic field, and you have this velocity, north-south velocity. So all these, we're checking the signature of reconnection. So first of all, we see, so let me go here. There is a BY perturbation inside the ion diffusion region. You can see this is a negative perturbation. This is a positive perturbation of Y. That is because of the charge separation effect as the whole effect was first in the, uh, explained nicely by Ben Sonrup. Uh, that is because the electrons, they're magnetized, they're following the field line and drifting away, but ions, they're so heavy, they're unmagnetized, they lag behind. So that creates a net current. So the current will go this way above and opposite below. Okay. okay, as a result, it generates, because of a loop current, it generates a per corresponding perturbation, the magnetic field. Okay. Uh, if you have both sides, okay, you have a current sheet, it's pretty symmetric on either side, the current sheet, you expect a quadruple structure. But because the density on the magnetosphere side is so much lower than the magneto outside magnetosphere uh, side, magneto, which is called magneto sheet side. So you have most of the effect are outside. Okay, there's not much current inside. So you have quite asymmetric. Well, I, just, I just see one pair here. Um, and then there is a, the, the jet velocity because the magnetic field goes like there is a tension force goes this way. And so there is the acceleration, acceleration. That's as expected. You see the bi-directional uh, opposite jets. And you can see the temperature and the isotropy here. Okay. The perpendicular temperature is higher in the magnetic sheets because this is the, uh, the temperature uh, downstream of this shock. This is the shock is perpendicular shock. Okay. But in the reconnection, you have a much stronger enhancement of parallel temperature. That is because the ion beams. Okay. So origin, so um, as a result, you can see the temperature are comparable in the reconnection region. Okay. And then we can also look at an electric field structure associated with this whole effect, uh, which is also consistent with the correct charge separation sign. Okay, so that's to show that we have um, pretty, we're pretty sure that here's the reconnection from theoretical point of view that points to all the signatures we're expecting. But then the next question from the global simulation is um, how, okay, not just how the X lines which is the reconnection lines are formed, but how 
do they evolve? Do they stay there all the time? Is it steady state or do they, is it not steady? So it turns out this X line, so I'm gonna follow it as a flux rope here. So we have X line here, we have X line there in between, you have this rope around, imagine you have a wide dimension, so it's that loop around. So we can follow that to measure the, the motion of this X line, because it's just associated with this X line. So what we see is, okay, so first, okay, this is a function of time. Though these lines are the position of the flux rope. So it's like they first, the, on the, the center flux rope is first formed. This is the, the above the equator northern side. And then the propagate forward as this reconnection leaves away and then it leaves and then leaves away a, another, a, the thin current sheet come back to form. So you have the loops go away and the thin current sheet forms again. And then you can see around the same location, okay, around 2RE, and then there was a new flux rope forms. And then it propagate away as it leaves away, okay, leaves and uh, speed up because of this, this, you have this magneto sheet that was slow, drag it around, accelerated. So it goes around. And then you have the third one form. So you have this repetitive, same, the, the, the one goes down, okay. So it turns out you have this recursive reconnection near at this region, but overall, every time you form a new X line, it's around the same place. So if I randomly pick three different times, I look at, I draw the flux ropes and I can see the X lines, they're more or less around the same location. There are X line here, there are X line here, and X line here. This direction is that Y direction because you have a loop of extending around that direction, okay. Uh, so I'm going to compare with empirical model uh, for this MMS event, this is by Trena. Um, so you can see uh, this model points, you have three segments of X lines. So the simulation also three segments. Okay. Um, so, but the parameter used in the simulation, the gen uh, reconnection, the days I challenge and the observation, they're not exactly the same. Okay, but more or less um, under similar, because the, the simulation only assumed the uh, magnetic points from the sun pointing southward, no, did not include other directions. But overall, you can see it's kind of a consistent with this empirical model. Okay, so now, uh, since we have this, MMS is a spacecraft, um, is, at the magneto pass, it observed this event. This is an MMS observation event. For um, if I put the MMS location, it's right here to the simulated flux rope geometry. Okay, so that's the equator. So it's close to equator. But I said, um, and then as like I said, the next line reconnection is above the equator. So and then you observe the effect of this reconnection and. Um, North, uh, south of it, okay? And so we put a virtual spacecraft, meaning I put spacecraft there and it observed the motion of, of anything I see um, passing that point, okay? So that you can do it with just put the point right there, not moving, just look at um, the variation around you or you can move it similar to the spacecraft. But since the spacecraft didn't move much okay, within the simulation um, resolution, so they're basically similar. Yeah. Okay, so we, this is what we found in the hybrid simulation. The uh, black line is an MS observation. So you can see they're pretty consistent in within the, uh, Length, the resolution of the simulation, but we don't have the high frequency stuff is because in the model, we assume electron is a, is a fluid. Okay? So the high frequency stuff are not captured. Look at the ion distribution. Okay, so again, this is that of XC point. Okay, so these are the magnetic field along the X line. X line is right there. So we're gonna record the distribution around the satellite position. So this is a result of a simulation. This is the MMS observation result. 
um, we see similarly both have a D-shaped distribution, meaning instead of having a whole, okay, if this is a parallel perpendicular uh, velocity space, they're not isotropic, but the parallel velocity is the head is still here, but the tail is cut. Okay, so both are this is this is called the D shape with the head um, pointing down here. Okay. okay, that is because all those particles are coming in that you can can come in to transmit it from outside to this side, the field line where we record it. You have to have a field line. Uh, the particles moving has to be faster than the field line motion. So if you lag, even though you have velocity, but if you're slower than the field line convection velocity, it will not come in. Okay, so you can oh you can transfer the, the frame to do that. So that's why the tail part is cut. Okay, so if you have by okay, just I just show one plot here. And then you, so if the by comes in, in that previous simulation, I said we didn't impose other component. If you have a by, so this one has the positive by, and then you have an x line extending, okay, it's gonna be longer. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the, the field line geometry, come back to the, the field line geometry, talk about how it are connected. As we expect, so this is after reconnection. So you have fuel line coming. This is the, the uh, come back to the Earth, a uh, north uh, ionosphere, and then connect to uh, the solar wing. Okay, so this is the blue one, connect to the solar wing open. Okay, likewise, the bottom one is a, the black one, is also open to the solar wing. But in addition, we have two more. Okay, so we have an I interplanet magnetic field, two interplanet magnetic field, entirely outside magnetosphere, or cusp to cusp. Okay, so from one end connect to the other end is basically close, but it is the close after the reconnection, in addition to the bottom two. Okay. So this something happened here is due to re-reconnection of the reconnected field lines. So this is shown in the VITO model. Um, if I have a reconnection, see I have two field lines or flux tubes. Okay. Um, the AB on one side, let's take it on the outside on the magnetosheet side. C and D are on the magnetospheric side. So they're on the two sides of that magnetopause power current sheet. So after reconnection, you get this way, right? But when these two, they are accelerated, if for some reason they can reconnect again, and eventually you have second reconnection here, give you the final connectivity here. Okay, so you can see that AC prime and DB prime are the, the traditional ones we talk about here, but B and A prime are entirely on the solar wind side. C and D prime are entirely on the Earth's earthward side. So C and D prime are, this one is the one connecting from, from pole to pole. Okay. All right, so and then, uh, so this and then later was also found by this observation. Okay, so that one is interesting because in recent years, there has been observations finding this re reconnection. Okay. Um, take this recent observation by Russell and Chi. Um, so they found, so this is the, the flux rope. Okay, so these are the local uh, coordinate. But in this plot, the satellite record BX, BY, BZ, and this is B. And these are the um, electron I and electron energy spectrum. Okay. And same. So these are two different. Flux rope. This is called flux transfer events. Okay, so all these structures are consistent the flux transfer event. But if you look at the uh, electron uh, energy spectrum, so there are, they separate into two types. So on the left is type A, and you can see above a uh, KEV. It's about yeah, and then you can see the uh, the energetic electrons. Okay. And, but in the second event, 
you see no this energetic electrons. So this one indicates that you are actually is it on the closed field line. So the trap electron inside the magnetosphere, that this is what you observe. But this one is pretty maybe entirely open to the solar wind. Okay. So now they observe this type of, of the distribution inside in a flux transfer event. So this is the cartoon they draw. Okay. So as the reconnection, so you recall the previous mechanism. So after reconnection, this uh, and then you have real reconnection that can create four types of uh, connectivity. So this is shown here. So you have, so uh, that is again BSB or BZ, B, and then this is a pressure. Um, I'm sorry, this is the density. So this row is the pressure. So inside, so this is a whole large gradual change that's this kind of FT, the, the flux transfer event, the flux rope, large flux rope structure. Embedded in there, you have a thin current sheet. But the two sides of the thin current sheet, you see this, this is the electron flux as a function of colors are electron flux and the scales are um, the pitch angle. So basically if zero degree is a long field line and 180 degree is again field line. So you can see there's behavior are so different. On this side, you see bi-directional. On this side, you see unidirectional. So they think this is, what happened after re reconnection between two flux ropes, causing one is entirely connecting to inside, close to the earth, the other is open. Okay, so now I have to talk about the interesting stuff about flux ropes, how you see them, uh, their signatures from simulation observation. Now, turn uh, my gear to the um, particle trace the ion particles. Yeah. So the ions, so the magneto path is open. So these ions can come into the ionosphere. They can cause um, impact to the ionosphere, can cause um, a lot of interesting activities than the aurora. Um, but there is actually a fingerprint of particle coming in from magneto path reconnection. So as shown here in this paper, um, so in this paper, the, this is an observation by low altitude um, spacecraft D1, D2, their conjugate observation. Um, so what measures here is the, the ion, in, so D2, D1, so ion electron energy spectrum. Okay? So, so this is the energy as a function of latitude as the spacecraft going through the la different latitude. So you see there's a dispersive structure, the high energy come in first and low energy come in. And then you have another one. Okay? But you see pretty, pretty much a similar structure on the two spacecraft, even though they're separated by 20 minutes. So there is a debate whether this is caused by some steady reconnection at a magneto pause okay? or some temporal reconnection happened and then happened again. You can see all these different um, repetitive structures. Okay. Uh, why is it there's a dispersive structure? So there's a model. So model basically agree it is by velocity filter, time of flight event. Um, this is an old paper by Pat Rice. So draw that, that mechanism. So that's the magneto pause. And then after reconnection, if you zoom in this region in the cusp, okay, this is where the space, the observations made. And because the field line convection is with some velocity, when the particle comes in, and then as the field line is convecting toward the particle is coming in, um, reach down, okay, it can even bounce back. Um, but because the low energy particle will take more time to come in, while the, part, the field line is already convected certain for the distance to the tail. So you will see high energy particles come in first at the la la low latitude, while low energy comes in later when it's already reached the higher latitude. So that's why you have this kind of dispersive structure. Okay. Okay. Um, so to address whether that repetitive dispersive structure is caused by temporal structure or indicating a steady recognition at a magneto pause. 
So I have a current tracers mission, which is to be launched um, in 2023, I believe. Okay, so, and we are using the global hybrid simulation to support this mission. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use the previous global hybrid simulation paper to talk about how we're gonna do it. So this is the tracer mission. Okay, so we have two identical spacecraft is um, Launch to the, this is again, low altitude, about 750 kilometer. Uh, and then two, they're gonna record the, uh, the spectrum and compare how they're different or, or the same. And then the bottom is uh, the, what we obtained from our previous hybrid simulation. So I'm gonna address that. So that simulation is time at all. Uh, is for the same southward IMF case of reconnection. And then in that case of reconnection uh, simulation, we observe the three X lines. One is at equator, one is mid latitude, one is a high latitude. And between them, you can see nicely flex ropes, okay, between these. Um, and we can trace the bottom line is the, the movie showing the dynamics of magnetic field lines and some particle trajectory correspondingly. So we can trace the particle in the self-consistent simulation in the dynamic one to see how they come to the cusp from the solar wind. So this is what we got, the spectrum. You can see the, this is the energy spectrum. Um, as a function of latitude. Uh, you can see the, the step-like um, structures. Uh, so we associate with it with reconnection in different three different regions, because okay? you can trace field line to see where they're from. Okay? So these are for, for example, for this region A. Okay, this is region A. That's the particle from the, the low latitude X line. Uh, I have so those dispersive structure actually measures the low energy cutoff because that's associated with the field line convection. So we're gonna pick two particles of that low energy cutoff, okay, to trace them. Uh, so I have at different times, we have different field lines. The black ones are the field lines. You can see initially there was no reconnection and the flexural formed, evolved, and then evolved. Okay, so the particle in the meantime, the red one comes in from farther distance, and then there is a white one coming in um, closer distance. So at next moment, this red one is trapped inside the flux rope. This black one is moved there. And the next moment, the black, the red, black, I'm sorry, black one, the white one, the white one moves further a little bit, but the red one actually has a higher energy. It's kind of a catch up is already here. And finally, this red one is high, has higher energy. So to come to the uh, recorded cusp region um, early in the lower latitude than this lower particle. So that's, if we follow these particles, look at how their energy change in the flux rope. So the particle coming from the solar wing in early time, and then now trapped in the flux rope and then come out from the flux rope being accelerated and then eventually um, decelerated as it moves out of the boundary layer, move out of that reconnection um, region. Okay, so we have particle trajectory from different locations reconnection and we can explain them how they're accelerated and then what's the effect of flux ropes. Uh, we can also record the time variation at a fixed point, okay? So even you just at a fixed point, um, you look at the time variation between the open close field boundary, and you can see this kind of a structure. This the appearance of the particles is so coherent, well associated with the lo location of open close field line boundary. Okay? So you have mixed effect here. Okay? Um, so and the, the tracer team also. Um, recently in 2018 did a two rocket mission um, to has a, a kind of a, a testing the um, supporting the, the tracers mission. So, so these two uh, high fire 
two rocket, high flyer, low flyer. They're conjugate, but they're at different altitude. And they record the structures like this. Okay. So now if you look at the, the, the recorded by Carl Heinz uh, Tretna here, and you can see that all these are points of when open close field line boundary passing the, the spacecraft. And you can see the overlapping, okay, this, the uh, injections from the magneto pulse. And at the meantime, there's observation of MMS and magneto pulse. So you can kind of associate reconnection with um, the, the, energy, the particle precipitation here. Okay, uh, I have the last three slides to show something a little bit, um, um, a little more prediction. Um, so when we saw the simulation, we say, suppose the IMF is steady, it's been steady, there's all these reconnections going on all the time. But since this planet, in the planet magnetic field change, um, most likely carrying by some perturbations from the a CME from the magnetic field or by this uh, the solar winds or interplanetary space or by this discontinuity. Okay, suppose I launch a discontinuity. So there's a change of magnetic field turning from south to north. Okay? Before it turns, I have magnetic reconnection as I expect, expect at the magnetic pulse and then it suddenly turns to north. What will happen? What happened is there can be a reconnection inside this tangential discontinuity, which is the current sheet, okay, before reaching the magnetic pulse. Okay? So this is what happened. Um, so you have this, uh, this, again, the day side view of magnetic field at different times. So at the magnetic, the, the magnetic field of the solar wind initially pointing southwards, so as you expect, there is some reconnection at magnetic pulse. Since this tangential discount is moving in from the solar wing, across the bow shock into the magneto sheet and then coming to the magneto pulse, there is some reconnection. Again, flux flow happened here in this tangential discount. Okay. okay, so the reason is because there is some compression of discontinuity, first at the shock and then as the continued propagating to the High magnetic field, the obstacle of the geomagnetic field is in the magneto sheet is continuously being compressed. This is what we see. If I plot the current density in this current sheet, so this is when they're in the solar wind. And then they, they cross the bow shock, they're being compressed and then continuously being compressed. At this point, the, the largest the density, the reconnection in this tangential discount start to occur. So as a result, this is what you see, okay? As a function of time, you can see there's flux ropes in the magneto sheets. This is the zoom in structure. There's a lot of flux rope because the velocity here takes effect is a quite non-uniform, okay? You imagine you have differential flow velocity drag the current sheet. So you can see multiple regions, the current sheet can become thin. So you have this multiple, Flux ropes. Okay, now this is the magnetic magneto pulse flux rope, those we talk about, okay, under southward IMF. After these flux rope come in, they cause re reconnection between here and the geomagnetic field lines across the longer flux rope here. Okay, so this is zoom in that process. We have a magneto sheet flux rope, or has the magneto pulse flux rope. Now there's a reconnection happens. And then all these are considered a transient structure after all these, because in the meantime, they propagate to the tail after they're all gone, you have a nice quiet northward field line. This is behind the discontinuity. Okay. We can probe in this re-reconnection for two virtual spacecraft on the two sides of this flux row. This is what we see, the signature of reconnection. Signature of reconnection um, on the two sides, so as a result, the velocity is opposite. One is accelerated in one direction, the other is in opposite direction. So you can probe in to see where the flux rope is, this is the red region, and this is magnetos here, this is the magneto pulse. So this reconnection is right at the magneto pulse. 
Okay. Uh, I hope you find this interesting. Um, this is my summary. So use the global hybrid simulation, we found the following. Flux growth generated by reconnection at the base of magnitude pulse are there through the multiple edge line reconnection. There were four types of fuel and connectivity as a consequence of reconnection. And the formation of day side multiple X line and this uh, is through a dynamic recursive process. Okay, but overall the global structure of the X line more or less stays the same. Um, with X line location. And we can also trace uh, study the spatial spectrum because precipitating ions use this simulation code and complement complement or support uh, the space observation. Uh, in addition, the simulation also show that um, flux drop can occur in the discontinuity coming in from the sun, from the solar wind, and they can interact with the magneto pulse, pulse of the read reconnected flux ropes. Um, actually, that, that length is much longer. The, X, the long length of the flux is much longer now than the initial by purely cell for the end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, you, for um, sharing. Uh, your presentation with us today. We don't have any questions at this time, but if we get any, I'll be sure to send them to you. And we're signing off until the next speaker series. Bye, everyone. Thank you.